Alrighty, in this tutorial, we're gonna take you through all the details and share with you everything that you'll need to know about how to take full advantage of the custom content block component. Now this component is very flexible and very robust and will allow you to add any kind of custom messaging to your Ingsoft powered web stores. So let me give you an example of how this could be useful. Let's say that you wanna embed a YouTube video or upload an image, add some text, put a description or instructions, add links or HTML. The custom content block will allow you to do all of the above. So here's an example. This is the Ingsoft demo site, and here we have a header at the very top of this example web store. Now here we have the custom content. So here we have a, a large title at the very top, welcome to Bulldog Nation. We have an embedded YouTube video. We've matched the background color. And of course, as I continue to scroll, you'll see a fundraiser, you'll see the product component, and of course the uh, footer component at the very bottom of the web store. So what we're gonna do is, uh, now that you've seen an example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that component. We'll kind of start from scratch. So I'm gonna say yes, remove component from this web store. So what we're gonna do at this point is I'm gonna click on the, well of course I'm logged in as an Ingsoft admin and I've gone to edit mode. Now I'm gonna click on the blue icon in the very bottom right corner which is uh, provide access to the component library. Now at the very top of the component library, of course you can click the drop down to get all the different categories of components and of course this will grow over time. Here I can select the content block and that will show me the, the layout versions that are available. Currently there's layout one. We may add additional ones in the future. So what I can do is select the layout. Now notice I had the content block previously on this example store and Ingsoft recognizes, do you wanna start from scratch or do you wanna load data? So in this case I can say, hey load, since I didn't save and publish any changes, I have the ability to start from scratch, which I'll do now. So I'll go ahead and make that selection, start from scratch. So immediately after the custom content component is loaded onto the store, you're gonna get this WYSIWYG editor. Now that stands for what you see is what you get. So this is a visual editor that will allow you to make your changes and add content and see what that looks like in real time. So let me introduce you to this workspace here. It's very simple. You'll notice a little icon here, a little plus symbol that says quick insert. And if you click that, that'll let you quickly insert a photo. You can insert a, an ordered list. So maybe instructions like first step, second step, third step. And of course, here we have a bulleted list. So a quick way to access some commonly used feature. Now I have the ability to again, type in my text. So I can put in Bulldog Nation. And uh, I have the ability to use the icons here. And notice if you hover your mouse over an icon, it tells you what that icon is. And then in parentheses, if there's a shortcut for that icon, you can uh, use uh, that shortcut. So if I hit a command B on my keyboard, I'm a Mac user, that just made Bulldog Nation bold. If I hit command I, that will make it italicized. If I hit the shortcut again, it will reverse it. So again, hover your mouse and I'm gonna take you through these. So we have bold, which as the name implies, it's gonna take whatever text you've highlighted. And if you click bold, it's gonna make that text bold. Uh, of course, I can italicize any highlighted text. I can underline any highlighted text and I can strike through any highlighted text. Now I also have the ability to highlight my text and change the font size. So let's say that I want a title and then I want a description that's not as large. So it's all about highlighting and targeting the specific elements that you wish to take action on. So from this uh, text uh, font size dropdown, I can choose the font size that's appropriate and I can see that in my workspace here. Now I also have the ability to change the color. So going down to the next option here, if I click color, I can choose a color to assign to the text that's been embedded. I can also control background color. I can also remove the formatting. So let's say that I later decide to not have any uh, color formatting. I can clear that from this workspace here. So it's a matter of your preference. And again, I can match branding colors uh, to any of the text that I add in this component. So as we make our way down, here I have other features to align the content. So I can center align, left align, right align. I can uh, align justify, so choose whatever's appropriate. And then here we have access again to that ordered list. So this is useful if you're giving instructions to a customer, like first step is to choose your product, second step, add custom personalization, and third step, check out. You can use that in any way you see fit. And of course we have an ordered list, which is bulleted lists. So if you just wanna bullet out a few key points, orders will ship on this date, you know, um, any other details that are relevant, you could use in bullets. Now here we have the ability to insert a link. So let's say that I hit return and I want to put in like, you know, click here as an example. And I want to use the other features to, again, not make that bold. I want to change the font size to make that smaller. That's not, you know, something that I need to stand out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight here and I want to link that. So what I can do is click the insert link function 
And here I have the ability to type in the URL. So type in the link that you want, uh, you know, upon click, you want that person uh, being navigated to. And of course I can see where it says text, I can see the text that I've highlighted, which in, in the example I showed you was here, click here. Now I have the ability to say open in new tab. So I'm gonna click that, which means if somebody clicks here, it's gonna open up the link in a new tab. And that's typically best practices. You wanna keep the consumer anchored on the web store. And if you're gonna redirect them anywhere, you wanna do that in a new session or in a new tab. So I can go ahead and click insert and that's gonna insert that link. Now, once I insert the link, I can of course open the link just to preview it to make sure it works properly. Always a best practice, so I can make that selection. I chose to open the link in a new window and we added uh, inksoft.com as the link and you can see that uh, opened up in a new window. I also have the ability to make changes here, like change the style. You know, do you wanna make it, you know, make it bold? Do you wanna make it green so it's clear? Um, so all your controls here, you can unlink or you can edit the, ink, the link. So all of that function was um, visible if you click on the link or hover over the link and then highlight the link. So as we make progress, a few more functions to show you. You have the ability to insert an image and there's a few ways to do this. So I can click insert image. Number one, I can drag and drop an image. So if you have something on your desktop, I can go and drag it and drop it right onto um, the workspace here. And again, there's your visual editor. Now notice in the background, now that I've appended something, you can actually see that preview in the background. So not only do you see it in the, WYSI, in the WYSIWYG editor, what you see is what you get. You also, you also see it in the background of the, comp of the store itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and now that I have this image uploaded, I have the ability to control the size so I can reduce the size. Um, you know, if it's selected, I can give it inline or I can wrap the text. I can of course align it and I can remove it. So that's your function. Now, you, you, beyond dragging and dropping, you can actually uh, go ahead and type in a direct URL to an image. So if you go to a website and you right mouse click uh, on a, an asset or an image, notice there's the option to say copy image address. And what that's gonna do is allow you to paste in that image address directly into this and I can click insert and that's gonna pull the image from wherever it's located on the web and uh, place it in here. So a few other functions that are relevant, I'll go ahead and clear this from the workspace. You have the ability to access the browser. So anything that you might have already uploaded to this store, you can take advantage of the browser by clicking the little plus icon or clicking the trash icon to remove that. All right, so as we make progress now, let's talk about inserting a video. And there's two ways to do it. Of course, you have the ability to, to link directly to a video. You have the ability to paste in the embed code. So if you go to YouTube or Vimeo or any of the other hosting services, uh, and click share, you can get access to the embed code. You can just copy and paste that here. And you also have the ability to drag and drop a video from your desktop. Now the most common is gonna be the embed code. YouTube uh, is the most popular uh, video hosting uh, provider and they make it really easy to grab embed code and paste that and then insert it right into this workspace here. Now as we make our way, there's a few more functions to share. We have undo and redo levels. So if you make a mistake and you wanna go back in time, you can click undo to go to a previous state. The other thing I wanna share with you, and I'm actually gonna click code view. So for those of you that have some basis uh, of skill with HTML, um, you can use the code view to insert and edit HTML. So here you can see this is the HTML perspective of the content we've already added. So I can toggle to the WYSIWYG view, uh, the visual editor, and I can go to code view and I can make changes. So this font was set, you know, the headline font was set to 72 um, pixel, but I can make it 125 pixel. If I click off code view, so I'll click code view again, that's gonna then show me that change in transformation right on the screen. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I can paste in uh, any kind of HTML that I might've already formatted. So again, I could paste in a, uh, a YouTube, um, you know, YouTube content or you know, that, that URL that we just grabbed for that image. You can paste in your content here and make modifications to it. So in this case, I'm not gonna make any changes. Uh, so that is pretty much everything you need to know about the edit content block. Those are all the individual features. Uh, you can use any series of those features. So I can have, again, text. I can have a YouTube video. I can have an image. I could have uh, other content associated with that. So when we're done making our changes, I can click done, and that will dismiss that uh, you know, WYSIWYG window, and here I see the content on my screen. Now, of course, I have the ability to make some changes here. So notice I can change the order in which the, the, the content displays. So if I wanna move that to the top of the web store, I can use the arrow functions to rearrange the order in which uh, these components display. 
The only two things you can't adjust the order is going to be the header, which is always at the top of the store, and the footer, which is always at the bottom. Any of the other components, you can control the order in which they display. Now I can click on edit, and once I select edit, I have the function here on the left-hand panel where I can manage the background color. So in this case, I can assign a color uh, from the recently used or palette, or I can choose a custom color from the color selector. Now what you'll notice is if I go from transparent to say a darker shade, notice how Inksoft automatically updates the text. So white text on a dark background is the best and optimal way to display that. So again, we've built in a lot of function to automatically make good decisions for you. So that's how we control the background color of a component. I can also go back to the manage content screen. So let's say that I make the judgment that, hey, that text was a little too large. I want to reduce the size back to, maybe, or maybe put it at 60 pixels. And I want to you know, modify, add more content, add a, a YouTube video. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you how to add a YouTube video since I keep referencing it. So let's head over to YouTube and I'll just grab a generic video here. And uh, let's just go to this. So what I'm going to do, uh, I can navigate to a video and I can click share. So the share function and I can click embed. And here I'm going to extend this menu here to say show more. And what I can do is choose the video size that I want to embed. So from this drop down, you can choose the size. So 1280 by 720 is a HD and large you know, format. So I can choose whatever's appropriate. Then you have options. Do you want to show suggested videos uh, in the, when the video finishes? Well, that's undesirable in a lot of cases. Do you want to show player controls? Do you want to show the title? So I like to just leave this option that says show player controls. Make it simple and minimal. So what I can do now, notice where my mouse is clicking. Uh, here is the embed code. So I can copy that code and I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. I can come right back to the WYSIWYG editor. And again, there's two ways. I can use the insert video function now to embed the video. So I can go ahead and insert that now into the store and you see how that, that appears. Or I can use the code view uh, to paste it directly in here. It's a matter of your preference. So now that I'm done, I'm going to click done. And now I can see that video that's been introduced into the custom content block component. So that's really everything you need to know. A few other important uh, notes here. Of course, you have the ability to remove. So as I first showed you, you can remove a component. We always remind you, hey, do you really want to do this or do you want to continue editing? So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, keep that component. Last thing you need to be aware of is to take action and to make this live and publish it, you'll click save and publish. If you want to discard your changes and you don't want uh, to preserve those, you can click yes, discard. And it brings you back to your last saved state, which is what we started with initially. So that is uh, the custom content block component. If you have questions or any needs, please reach out to the Inksoft Success Squad. Uh, we'll be happy to guide you through uh, any questions you might have and share with you how to take full advantage of this component. So as a quick summary, when you are setting up online stores, definitely consider if you need to provide extra instruction and details and insights uh, maybe you want to provide some extra branding, like again, for Spiritware program, maybe there is video of, you know, homecoming or, uh, you know, a, a pep rally or a specific game. And that just adds more personalization to that store. So really always make the decision and the calculus to understand what might be useful in a store to help maximize the selling opportunity, to give value. And we think that this component is certainly going to serve that purpose very well.